Hey everybody, so I am pleased to report that my game demo um, is available via itch.io at the link below. Uh, the I had posted earlier that my I needed I thought I needed 2.07 gigabytes worth of space for this thing. It turns out that uh, your game file will start to seem uh, very large very quickly if you've been uh, compiling and recompiling throughout the process without uh, deleting the previous uh, compiled game executable. So, yeah, I actually don't need that. It doesn't need that much space. It uh, All totaled, it needs about 700 uh, megabytes. But anyway, so this is, the game is called The Abraxas Garden. It's a project I've been working on in secret for a year now as I've taught myself to code with Adventure Game Studio. And it is a um, graphic point and click, first person point and click adventure. And I, this is like, point and click adventures are my favorite genre of interactive media. And uh, first person point and click adventures are uh, my favorite subgenre within that genre. And so this is meant to, um, you know, echo games like Myst and Return to Zork and The Seventh Guest, and uh, those are the big names. And then I'm, you know, certainly a fan of the smaller titles, uh, like, or the lesser known titles, like The Island of Dr. Brain and um, The Castle of Dr. Brain and Nine the Last Resort and uh, Gadget um, Past is Future and uh, Eric the Unready and John Saul's Blackstone Chronicles, and it goes on and on and on and on. So, uh, anyway, this game is, this is, again, a first for me. Um, I used, uh, the, I learned, I taught myself how to code uh, using uh, Adventure Game Studio. The manual for Adventure Game Studio is very, very thorough and teaches you everything you need to know. And the folks over on the forums were uh, a great help as well with this. I want to, uh, right now the game takes about 10 minutes. I would estimate if you don't know, if you know well, if you know everything you're supposed to do, the game demo takes about 10 minutes to complete. And uh, it may take you a little longer as you're working out the puzzles, but it shouldn't take very long. I haven't even bothered to put save and load functions on there yet because I, I don't think it's going to be that important uh, for the demo. But anyway, uh, uh, where was I? Yeah, this is a first time effort for me. Uh, you know, like I said, I taught myself to code, so this, this game looks like Myst, and it's coded at the level of King's Quest 1. Um, but I did all the music and all and all the coding, and the story uh, is my, my design and my idea. I used uh, Mid Journey to create the graphics, obviously. I don't have, that was the only, the only thing I couldn't uh, create myself, so uh, part of this the genesis of this idea was to see if Mid Journey had gotten sophisticated enough that I could do something like this with it. And um, this, the idea, so I, I wanted this to be the the story, um, you know, the, the, the vibe of the game. It's a science fiction idea. I wanted it to have, like, the aura of, like, classic Isaac Asimov, Arthur C. Clarke type science fiction. Uh, the storyline itself was derived from me contemplating a philosophical proposition that was put forth by C.S. Lewis. Uh, I'm not going to say what philosophical proposition, because that will probably give away the where the story's going. But uh, nevertheless, there's you know high philosophical uh, component, you know philosophical ideas at work, and certainly a lot of vintage science fiction, uh, cerebral science fiction uh, going, around, going on in the background. So people were asking, looking at the screenshots and asking, yes, H.R. Geiger and Dark Seed were huge influences. Uh, Cyber Dreams, which made Dark Seed, also made I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, which of course is my favorite game of all time. And um, my God, H.R. Geiger is an influence. H.R. Geiger influenced how my brain functions <laughs> above and beyond my uh, designs for this uh, this game. So uh, yeah, Geiger was an influence, Bekshinsky was an influence, and 
what was fun was asking it, you know, asking Midjourney to create things that H.R. Geiger never would have created, you know, never would have drawn himself. Um, and so, you know, ask, asking him to create things like vending machines, or, you know, asking AI to create things like vending machines in the style of H.R. Geiger and stuff like that. So there's, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on there, but I've always wanted to try to do something like this. One of my favorite games, it's an action game, but Out of This World action adventure game. Uh, Out of This World also released as Another World. And uh, it's one of my favorites from back in the day, vintage favorites. And that was done, the guy who made that did that entirely on his own. I mean, that game is on, that game is in the permanent collection at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. And it was done uh, 30 some odd years ago in a guy's bedroom, you know. So doing something like that was always immensely appealing to me. The visual assets were the only thing I couldn't do on my own, so uh, this is, you know, this afforded me that opportunity. I would love it if, um, uh, I would love it if, you know, this did well enough that I could hire an actual, uh, you know, actual graphics designers and that sort of thing to do it in the, do, the, uh, do this for me in the future. I think that would be really cool. Uh, but anyway, uh, right now it's uh, the, you know, the first little bit of the game from the intro to the first cut sequence is set up and ready to go. Um, I will say, by the way, I just, um, I scanned all of the files before I uploaded them to itch and virus scanned all of them and I, um, virus scanned them again after I tried downloading it from itch, checked all of the files then, and they all checked out for me. Uh, I just am saying, um, everything looks good. Just scan the files, um, for my, my own peace of mind, because I've never used this itch thing before. I don't know how reliable it is, and I don't want you to get some bad files or viruses or anything like that. Uh, and when I downloaded, my, my, um, you know, my personal download settings are set to catch just about everything, so I, yeah, I had to approve, individually approve every single file, but like I said, it ran just fine, haven't had any trouble. Um, and as far as the, uh, the download, uh, you know, as far as the setup and everything, it should, the, the, uh, the setup program, run the setup program, and it should have a thing to set the resolution, and you should be able to set the resolution to your screen's uh, natural, you know, existing resolution and everything. Obviously, I don't uh, recommend play, running it in smaller resolution than that because it won't look right. So anyway, that is what it is, and I don't know why she is being so all over me right now. But anyway, uh, that's where it's at, and I've had a lot of fun doing this, and I look forward to hearing what you all think. For the last maybe three months, I've been just going through. I had to, so I, I had to uh, decided that I wanted to run it. Um, there's a few different uh, AGS Adventure Game Studio has a few different templates that uh, you can use, uh, and I realized that um, what they call their LW Bass or Bass Tempo uh, template would be better than the Sierra template, the Sierra LucasArts template. So I had about half of what you're gonna play uh, finished. And I had uh, finished, and when I, I had finished it, and then I had to move, and that the whole move took up most of you know my fall and everything, getting that done and everything. So it's been since the uh, turn of the year that I've had time to start working on this again. And the first thing I had to do, I decided I wanted to recompile it in that interface. And so I had to just go through and just remake the game in the LW Bass, um, Bass, I don't know if it's Bass or Bass, I've only seen that the phrase written, but in the LW interface. And so I did that, and LW is very, it's a single click interface, so it's very convenient for doing a mist style interface, which is what this has, and uh, it was, um, um, you know, it was, it was a lot of doing that. That took, you know, <laughs> recompiling, re remaking it basically it took months, and it took a couple months, and then I had to finish it, and I wanted to make sure in doing this that I would have all the skills to, all the skills I needed to make the full game, which was 
uh, being able to create and include cinematics, being able to do navigation, uh, you know, clickable navigation, being able to do dialogues with characters, uh, being able to, uh, you know, uh, be, being able to uh, read text documentation within the, the narrative of the game, uh, you know, being able to solve all the puzzles and everything, and then just all of the uh, all the scripting that I needed to make, you know, do the mist style puzzles where, you know, you solve, you, you move this switch over here and this door over here is open and all of that stuff. And so that was all the stuff that I've been working on in the last three months, um, and getting all that finalized and then testing, testing, testing as best as I can. Now I invite you all to test the game, and I'm very interested in what you have to say. I welcome constructive criticism. The comments are open on um, the um, uh, Abraxas Garden demo uh, page, for well, which is linked below. Uh, so yeah, check it out and have fun with it. And uh, I look forward to hearing what you think. This has been uh, a lot of fun to put together, and I'm already, um, I'm already designing, you know, kind of sketching out the uh, puzzles that will go into the next area that you get to after what you play in this game. And I've got the, and I've got the overall story uh, planned out, where the story is going and everything planned out. So, um, you know, what remains is like putting together all of the minute puzzles of it and everything. Um, and like, uh, like, like the Mist games and the Zork games, one of the core puzzle mechanics is exploring this deserted environment and restarting all of the machinery and everything to get the environment up and running again and, uh, you know, learning what happened as you go and that sort of thing. So anyway, uh, look for, like I said, look forward to hearing what you think. And as far as people want to know when it's going to be done, complete, the whole thing ready to go, uh, I am going to take a month to two months off from this because I have several long-term projects that I need to get done. The Mitzi uh, album of classical music uh, called um, Serenades for Mitzi needs to be released. My solo album, uh, the one um, the one that I showed the, the graphics for a couple of months ago, uh, the one with the Laura James on the cover, that needs to be uh, finished, uh, finalized, the, the recording's done, the um, mixing and everything needs to finally be done. I say finally because I've been working on that since 2017. So I need to get those two things out. And then um, after that, <sighs> something else I needed to, uh, something else I needed to work on that's blank, I'm blanking on right now. But anyway, uh, after all that's done, I'll get back to back to this in the fall, and hopefully, um, the learning curve will be. You know, my my learning curve is done, and now I can now that I know how to program the mechanics I need, I can uh, move forward on you know really getting the thing done and everything. Anyway, so that's where it's at. Uh, like I said, thank you for checking it out, and I look forward to hearing what you think.